this recipe, we're doing 21 grams to 320 grams of water. We are gonna be pouring 70 grams for the bloom, which will be the first pour here that's gonna let the coffee degas a little bit, which you can see the bubbling on the top there. That's those gases releasing from the coffee. And I'm using 99 degree water. So I'm using a hotter water temperature than I typically would just because the roast profile of this coffee is very light and lighter roasted coffees are more dense, so they're a little bit harder to extract, so you need a hotter temperature. And that last pour, you might have noticed I'm doing just directionally in the center there. That's because I'm pouring less water, and I want it to drain down in the same amount of time here, so I have to pour it just in the center. So this should finish in about 30 seconds here, right around two minutes. Um, yeah, and then we'll enjoy it. How's it going, everybody? We're out to uh, Epic chemistry in uh, Moncton, New Brunswick today uh, with my friend Bryce. He's, he's a coffee legend in my opinion and he just made us some unreal coffee. Like, not gonna lie, some of the best I've ever had. So, some of the best I've ever had and yet he still wasn't satisfied with it. But anyways, if you guys are ever in the area, definitely check out Epic. It's like my favorite cafe in New Brunswick for sure. Um, but today we're gonna to be tying a woolly bugger, but not just any woolly bugger, we're gonna be tying a micro one or a mini woolly because that's what we've been fishing a lot lately. Fishing it as a nymph pattern on a dry dropper and it's been working really good for us on some trout. So that's what we're gonna be tying today. And it should be a pretty simple pattern for you guys to follow along with, so. Yeah, so I've been tying these in size 10s mostly. You can go smaller, a little bit larger if you want, but I've been finding 10s kind of the sweet spot where it still kind of looks like a woolly bugger. Um, but yeah, today we're gonna be, I've been kind of playing around with some fluorescent beads. I usually, I like use, I like to switch it up because sometimes I use like a tungsten or sometimes just like a, like a chrome, but we're gonna use a, we're gonna use an orange one today. Just to give that little bit of a pop to it. So put the hook in the vise here. And I'm tying on the Rinzetti Traveler. Love this vice and it fits the name pretty well. We brought it to uh, New Brunswick with us today, so. Kind of want to build up a little bit of a head and bring it right back to the, to meet up with the barb here. And this is kind of an important step. You want to make sure you get like some good marabou. You want to make sure it's not junk. I bought some stuff not that long ago that was kind of junky, but this stuff's a lot better, so. I'm gonna get a decent amount here. You just want the end. And pretty much what you wanna do is I'll kind of make the tail the same length as the body or a little bit longer. And tie that in. And like I said, like woolly buggers, I know everyone fishes these and there's a reason. They're like one of the best flies, like anything will go for a woolly bugger, trout, bass, anything, pickerel, everything. And they're deadly. Like some of the biggest fish I've ever caught have been on these. Um, but this is a little bit different. We got a small one. I like to fish big ones usually, but this time of year you gotta be kind of creative, so. Tie that in nice and tight. And something I do with my bigger woolies that I don't do with these is I'll put a little crystal flash on the tail. I won't do that with this one today because we got the hot head, but if I uh, was tying a normal one, I would definitely put some crystal flash on the tail. The next step, we'll get some uh, silver wire. We'll tie that in. And I never used to do this step when I was younger, but there's a reason, a reason for it, not just for looks, but it holds your, your hackle in place, make sure it doesn't fall apart after like three fish. So it's definitely something you wanna be, be dealing with your woolies for sure. And then you wanna get uh, some dubbing. I got some, some uh, this is kind of fine for, the, for this fly, but it's just some black dub, rabbit and then get a good clump in here. Basically just wanna work up the body of the fly. And 
and more the better really, in my opinion. time you don't want to do too much okay come to the head here okay got some saddle hackle here tie that in nice and tight okay make sure it's evenly spaced there for sure I'm pretty picky on that Sure the fish don't care. Then you bring your wire and you go the opposite direction that you just wrap your hackle in. So you kind of want to do another thing, you want to kind of give it a good wiggle so that it doesn't catch up into the fibers. Do it decently tight. Make sure it goes Hackle fibers aren't going anywhere. And there you go. Then you get your wire. Do two few turns and cut it off. Get a few wraps here. Get your hackle, you can either cut it off with scissors or break it off like I did. And then, give it a whip finish, and then you're done. I just do it twice, just cause. Okay. There you go. And there you got your woolly. And like I said, like you can fish these kind of any time of the year, fish them as a nymph, streamer, the size is kind of, it's pretty versatile, especially for like a brook trout, like they love these things. So um, these are good, olives good, natural. White, you could do basically any color you want. I mean, black's a classic, but yeah. Next time you're on the water, try these out. Pretty easy to tie, like even if you want to get in the fly tying, this is a good starter pattern. You only need a few things. You only need a few materials to do this. Um, and it's pretty affordable. Tie them, tie them up, tie a bunch. And yeah, fish them. <laughs>